Ryan Bavin here um, in March 2022, and we're back in the studio of Pat Bavin, um, and we're getting ready for another show coming up at the end of March down at Pine Logs Cultural Center. Uh, some of you may remember we did the same thing last year at this time of year, and uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun, so we figured we'd try it again and uh, get things rolling with it and uh, make some new work and take over pine logs again. Uh, to get things started with this whole thing, we'll probably do a few videos, but to start out um, here in the studio with my dad, Pat, and we're gonna, he's gonna kind of take us through a little bit about his collage technique in painting and um, yeah, we'll go from there. So here we are. And uh, yeah, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for the intro, Rye. Yeah, more mountain moments. This is uh, coming up here at the end of the month. <clears throat> and I'm, uh, I'm doing some work that I haven't done in quite some time, at least not a full body, which actually isn't ending up being a lot of paintings. Um, but I uh, was very fortunate in 2007 and 2009 to work under a highly acclaimed collage artist, Cherry Bromer, out of Los Angeles. And uh, so, yeah, this is just um, a lot of fun experimenting for me. Um, I want to just quickly show you, here is one painting which will be called uh, Mile One Bikes. This is done at Panorama with Mount Nelson. <clears throat> so you can see the interruptiveness of, of uh, collaging on top of um, an original painting underneath. Uh, Design-wise, obviously the first thing I do, like for example, with this painting, it started with me on site doing a sketch but you can see how it evolved and transformed and changed with the flowers in the foreground and the bikes not going behind the building but sort of over and jumping the building. So this always does give me a start point um, for my paintings. I'm always starting uh, outdoor, getting that at atmospheric um, interaction happening. And then uh, <clears throat> I have also got a, uh, this is my sketchbook that I always have with me when I'm sketching. And uh, so with regards to the collage work, it's, it's very intuitive. It's, it's fascinating because I will do an original painting. I'll do what I call the bone work, all the outline work. I'll fill it all in with, with uh, washes, thin washes, and then I'll start doing some heavy pigment work and get it to a point, and then I treat it as if it's a blank canvas. And I, here's an example. Um, this is a couple of little thumbnails of uh, Grey Wolf Golf Course with Mount Nelson, which we're gonna work on today. And then in conjunction with that, I've done a very basic, basic layout of uh, collage, what I think the collage paper needs to do, and it's got its own composition, a totally different composition than the original. So it's one composition overlaying the, comp the composition that's underneath it. So it's, it's uh, a process where the brain actually loses its own control and you go very intuitive. Uh, so you have no idea how the outcome's going to, to be. Other than in, I will also then do some uh, line work through it and I'll bring the background painting through in different parts. So this is just to give you a quick sense of, of the design that's involved. Um, <clears throat> so I have about 13 or 14 different compositional design ideas I work with. Uh, I very much have to thank Jerry Bromer for that, that kind of training. But um, so what I do, because I've spent a lot of time studying the Inuit people and their art, 
uh, and the fact that all the prints coming out of out of uh, Cape Dorset and those areas, Baker Baker Lake, um, they're all done on Japanese washi rice papers. So I buy most of my papers uh, in a white format, and uh, with this one you can see there's all sorts of silver flecking through it, which I'm using some of in my in my collage on this particular painting coming up. Uh, but what I do is I will take and I will tear maybe into 12 by 16 inch uh, shapes the rice paper and then I use golden fluid acrylics and I will stain the papers. So that particular paper right there um, I, I've done my layout of as to what I want to overlay colors with. So here's an example. So uh, the papers all get stained and then they get laid out so as they can dry. And I get a wonderful variety of, um, of different stains and patterns and uh, textures. Here's another paper that has a, a lot of little markings in it. And, when I'm working with the paper, one of the most sensitive parts of our body, uh, one of the most sensitive skins, is our lip. So I will generally um, brush the paper over my lip to find, because it can be very subtle, to find what is the smooth side, because that should be the upside. That side will carry less hairs coming out and whatnot as you're applying it onto the painting. Um, so I also use, since I'm an, uh, uh, an acrylic painter, most of my materials are all golden and you can cross-reference all sorts of glues, like this is a, a matte medium. All of this interacts happily. It um, it works very well together. So, and I can even apply, I then would be maybe going to my golden uh, heavy pigments. Everything interacts. I can even work wet on wet. Uh, so, it's a very interesting process. So, um, I'll use also just old brushes. I'll find an old brush. Uh, I'll keep this. This guy's actually lasts me quite a while. Um, and I just have to make sure I really clean it well. But I'll use this uh, <clears throat> for applying the matte medium. And here I've just got, the, you can see this thing weighs about, oh, I don't know, it's heavy. Um, just because there's been so much glue going in and out of this thing over the years. Um, so yeah, I haven't seriously done a full-on collage session since I figure probably about 2012 or 2013. So it's been very interesting and I'm slowly getting uh, more nerve up. Um, it, uh, you do an interesting painting then you don't want to really cover it up. But so that's some of the fundamentals. When I'm going to brush the paper with the glue, the matte medium, I have this, this was some years ago just a, a paper towel but it's really become very thick now so I'll, you'll see me, I'll, I'll use this and lay the rice paper down and, and brush on and then apply. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to now, this gives you a fundamental idea of uh, the materials and the design. So we're going to set up here uh, so Rye can sort of target in on, on this and I'm going to show you how I, I tear the paper and uh, then we'll go ahead and we'll lay one or two pieces down. So now we get to collage and um, I'm a little bit nervous here because I really quite like this painting. Um, this is a painting, well, a sketch that I did at Panorama 
in behind the ninth green with Uncle Tom's cabin and uh, with Mount Nelson in the background. <clears throat> and my layout, my design here really involves some big heavy bridges and whatnot. Uh, and you can see the paper layout. I've, I've actually, I, I wanted to do a uh, composition of bringing the mount and bringing Mount Nelson down and into uh, the flag with the gray wolf symbol on it and and then passing through. Um, and I'm wanting to, I've decided, I just decided, I thought I would do two pieces of this washi rice paper off the top, but now I've gone, no, I don't want to do that. That's going to give it too much uniformity. So I'm going to place a piece there. And you can see, you can see the, uh, the type of, of paper here. This is just a super thin, I mean, this stuff is so light and so thin, this rice paper. It can almost fly away. And then I've got here, you may be able to see all the little filaments uh, within this paper. You may be seeing the reflective side, so I just got to have to make sure as to what is the upside. Huh? That's definitely the upside. That'll be my top surface side. And this is important for when you're over painting. I may paint right over part of um, this paper. So you want that smooth side up. So, yeah, you can see here the variety I've got laid out and God knows what will happen. I may all of a sudden jump into different paper. In fact, I sort of like this little curve here. I was just looking at it and thinking, hmm, I'd like to uh, probably do something here. So the process is super, super simple. Um, for me to tear my paper and have some consistency, I want to keep I want to keep that exposure happening of, of um, the tree line. And you're just so using water I'm here? Just, yeah, I'm just using water with a brush and I wet my outline and then it tears for me much easier with good control as to um, what I'm wanting to get in the way of design. So yes, I am being I'm not being quite as random. Now you can see the interesting interaction here between a shape going lower and a shape coming in above that matches and it all shapes in with with that um, tree, that tree line. And I want to expose some of uh, some of the the hillside into that. So that will be then how I will lay that down. You can see over here I've actually used rice paper to give a sense of reflection from the cabin onto the water and yet I left a line through here just so that the water is still represented. So I, like I say I never really know even this shape here I had no idea that I was going to curve this in um, maybe to bring more attention to this area with the golfer and the golf balls. So let's just do a, uh, a, a lay down here. So I, I know that I've got my good side up and generally speaking I'll also get these little silver uh, dots to show better on the finished side. So I'm going to just take Okay, I know that I want that to be just sort of coming in like that. And I've taken, a, and you'll notice this paper is shaped to point to Mount Nelson. This paper here is shaped to point to Mount Nelson. I'm doing the same there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my matte medium and put it on, putting it on fairly thick right onto the canvas. This is a canvas um, and now I flip it. I flip the paper so I'm on the back side and I again just slosh on whatever paper or sorry whatever glue I need 
and then it's just a random I want a little bit of glue showing or blue sorry and I want a little bit of blue at the top showing and it pointing up so then I just have to really give it a good dose from the top side I get more of my matte medium and I just work it in there and then I take my finger and there's just nothing better than the texture sense with finger it's just such a a good aid so I'm just making sure that the paper is really settled into the paper below and also some of the canvas that's below <clears throat> and then you always when you when you uh, take these papers and, and you apply the glue and the lay down it actually becomes quite a bit more transparent so you can see through but I will also take and I will bring through I'll bring some of the color of the forest I'll bring some of the black heavy black bone work through so and then I need to uh, just use a piece of paper towel and I'm going to just dip it in water because there's excess glue out along the side especially on the canvas and I'm just going to clean that up a little bit but even then it will that that excess glue will blend completely with the acrylic paint uh, and especially then when you um, excuse me when you do a, uh, a varnishing it'll really help to bring that out that way so just in looking at whoops in looking at this you can see the movement is bringing attention to certain parts of the painting so this is very much of a tea uh, what we call a, a, a tea composition with it bordering across and then coming down now who knows where it will go from here I'm just going to apply one more piece um, and I lay out so is it I think I like you if, if you have a, a, a cut finished edge you always take and, and water it and trim it tear it off so is that that very finished look disappears but I quite like this piece is it just my gut and I'm working by gut here I, I like that that channeling through the way things are coming through from different directions so let's just go and do it going through so I'm directly onto the canvas here and uh, make sure I'm doing the right side I know this is my upside my finish side I did my lip kiss with it so I have the texturing on the right side and then I just peel it up and peel it off and uh, I just want to make sure that edge there is fairly good now I, I could do all sorts of things I did it up in here I actually applied the paper in such a way that it crinkled a little bit which brought more um, feeling and sense and texturing into it it's just really depends on what you what inspires uh, in motion because that's very much of what goes on with this process which makes it very very intriguing and now from so I've pretty well got that I just want to make sure that I've got that really laid down good and thick and uh, you can see how the background colors are coming through and I'll, I'll even enhance that I might bring some of this violet this dioxygen um, down the violet color down but I just want to clean up that edge and actually when I do this I also if I want the paper to not be real rugged on the edges I'm just cleaning that up too so that now puts me into this stage and I'm I keep I keep getting this sense I've got a bit of violet there a little bit of violet here I've got some red in there I've got different blues there's actually blue underneath all of this so I'm starting to layer up and um, so if I wished I could start to overpaint while it's still wet if I chose 
But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this um, dry out really well and uh, we'll see. I might probably be skiing tomorrow, but Saturday I'll look at this more and I may go, hmm, maybe I want to bring in a little bit of that orange, you know, that sort of golden yellow orange color. So we'll see. It's just going to it's going to keep on growing and building to what feels complete. So that is a very quick sense of doing collage on canvas with acrylic. Thank you.